It's been a sombre couple of days for our nation of Great Britain. Our longest reigning monarch, Queen Elizabeth II, has died at the age of 96 after ruling for just over 70 years. When she ascended the throne at the age of 25 in 1952, Britain was still on rationing after the Second World War. And 70 years on, Her Late Majesty has seen an unbelievable amount of changes to the world. A lot of those changes have been technological, but we have also seen a fundamental shift in how we dress. And to that effect, as a tribute to our Queen, I wanted to have a look at some of her best hat fashion moments. I thought we'd look at some stunning hats throughout her reign. Let me know which one is your favourite in the comments below. Let's start before the Queen's reign began in 1948 at the christening of the then Prince Charles. This hat looks stunning. It's a bonnet style with very fine veiling and a statement bow. I wasn't able to find the milliner of this hat, but I don't think it's unreasonable to guess that it could have been made by my favourite, Mr. Aggie Tarrop. He had been making hats for the Queen Mother since the mid-1930s. I've actually recently acquired a brim block that looks fairly similar. Perhaps a recreation is in order. One hat Mr. Tarrop definitely made for Her Late Majesty was her going away hat for her honeymoon with Prince Philip in November 1947. It's a little difficult to find good photos of this one, but from what I can make out, it's quite a tall beret style with a giant pom-pom, which is possibly ostrich, and it's also got four quills. In 1950, Her Late Majesty wore a sky blue hat with intricate folds and a fluted tulle trim for the christening of Princess Anne. Once again, finding out who made this one was a struggle, but this is a very interesting design. It stood out to me as being so different from the Queen's other hats. The soft fluffiness of the tulle makes it feel more like a hat that the Queen Mother would have worn. She is the one who loved the soft, frilly, romantic fashions. We'll skip forward now to quite a controversial hat choice. This Tudor bonnet-inspired helmet was designed by Simone Merman and worn at the investiture of Prince Charles as Prince of Wales in 1969. It consists of a pale primrose yellow silk and is entirely covered by beads and pearls. I think that the close-up detail looks beautiful, but I can see why it provoked a strong reaction. I think it looks more like a helmet than a Tudor bonnet. The recent television show The Crown had quite a faithful recreation of it. While this one isn't one of my favourites, it is indeed very striking. I think the 1970s were Queen Elizabeth's best hat years. Starting with this hat and coat ensemble worn to Princess Anne's wedding in 1973. This blue silk and purple lace toque was designed by Simone Merman. The lace looks like it is embroidered with ribbons. This is one of these hats that looks spectacular close up, but also cuts quite a lovely silhouette when worn together with the matching coat. Something that I really like about this design is the curved bottom line of the hat. It's made to curve around the head fitting. It is very comfortable to wear for a long period of time, which is definitely desirable for a wedding hat. Here is another hat by Simone Merman, worn by the Queen for her 1972 silver wedding anniversary. It is a lovely example of feather work, something that I'm currently learning about myself. This is a bubble berry completely covered in blue feathers and trimmed with a cascading ostrich plume. It's worth noting that the hat has faded. It originally matched the colour of the dress. This is something I keep noticing in vintage hats. Certain dye colours will fade faster than others, so when mixing your own colour recipes, you should keep that in mind. In 1977, the Queen wore this grass green hat for her tour of New Zealand. It is yet another Simone Merman creation. It actually looks very similar to the hat for Princess Anne's wedding. It's got the same curved base for comfortable wear and the fabric draped over the back as if it was a kerchief has a similar shape to Princess Anne's wedding hat. I think it is a stunning example of how when you use the same base for a hat you can create a completely different design with a fresh new feel. I think Her Late Majesty looks beautiful in this one. Green was very much her colour. Another 1977 Jubilee Ensemble was this frothy pink number. The hat was designed, yet again, by Simone Merman. 
there was some controversy with this hat being reported to have been made by Frederick Fox, but apparently it is definitely by Simone Merman as it has her label on the inside. This fact has been confirmed by the Royal Collection Trust. I don't know what the exact story behind this mix-up is. If you'd like to read more about this, I have left the links to all the sources in the description box. But let's have a look at the hat itself. It is again one of those voluminous berry designs with cascading silk tulips. This style of hat was very popular at the time, and I have a similar one in my vintage collection made by Edna Wallace. There is a replica of this pink hat that doesn't have the stitching detail, and I actually prefer it like that. Whilst there is no doubt that this is a beautiful hat, I am not so sure that the colour suited Her Late Majesty. But it did make her stand out from the crowd, which was the number one requirement for her outfits. Moving into the 80s now, this lilac straw pillbox was worn on a visit to Singapore in 1989. It was made by Philip Somerville, a very notable royal milliner. You can see that the quality of the parasitical straw is incredible. Just look at the fineness of that weave. As for the design, it is very clever as it uses an entire capeline in a very elegant way. The crown of the capeline has been made into a very stylish and sleek pillbox. The brim has been folded up and draped onto the back. Poking out, we can see little violets with their joyous yellow centers and a few green leaves. All these colors are picked up on the queen's dress. At her Golden Jubilee celebrations in 2002, the Queen wore this hat made by Frederick Fox. This is the style most of us are familiar with seeing on Her Late Majesty. A large tall crown and a Breton brim. The upswept brim here is very important as it has to be off the Queen's face so that she was visible to the public. Royal milliner Rachel Trevor Morgan has a much more refined take on the Queen's more recent hats. I think this medium crown and smaller upswept asymmetric brim is very flattering, as is the powder blue colour. This ensemble was worn to the centenary celebrations of the Women's Institute in 2015. This hat is made out of cinema. You can see the top joined to the sideband right here. It is trimmed with Rachel's signature silk roses and a silk satin sash. I really like how the satin sash picks up on the shiny detail of the coat's frog clasps. You can even see a little hat pin used to hold it securely to the head. Here is the Queen at the state opening of Parliament in 2017. Does this hat remind you of anything? Apparently, it is not meant to signal anything or convey any kind of political messaging, but these similarities are unavoidable. The Queen had not commented on anything political during her reign, as that is not part of her role and I personally think she wasn't making any political statement here either. I actually think this hat was a bit of a mistake by the Queen's dresser Angela Kelly and milliner Stella McLaren. Neither of them saw the resemblance to the EU flag when they were designing this outfit. I guess we all make mistakes, but this was a pretty significant one as it caused quite an outrage. This hat has since been retrimmed with a matching fabric bow to replace the yellow centred feather flowers. I'd like to end on the Queen's most important hat, her crown. This is footage from a 2018 documentary celebrating the 65th anniversary of her coronation. But is it, is it still as heavy? Yes, it is. Yes, it weighs a ton. <laughs> it's very solid, isn't it? And this is how I would always like to remember her. Joyous, smiling and laughing, admiring her crown. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you've appreciated this look back over seven decades of Her Late Majesty in Hats. I've been Alona, your London internet milliner. See you next time. Bye.